Welcome everybody to this week's video. I hope you're all doing well. So today is Monday and it's supposed to be the hottest day of the year. What is it in here? It's two o'clock and it's 38 degrees in here. I've sent Keith and Simon home because it's just horrible. We'll just start earlier in the morning instead. So in this video, you remember this time last year, we built this beach buggy. <laughs> I finally got it on the road. It's been hard work to say the least to get it up to like my standard of where you can jump in it turn the key and just go out and do a 20 mile drive so we've had a lot of problems along the way and it first started with the suspension so the front suspension it had a lowered beam on it every time you went over a bump the wheels touched the arch so on a car where just the paint costs more than a thousand quid we don't want them tires rubbing them arches. So bought a set of coilovers for it. On the lowest setting, it actually sits at the perfect height, which is brilliant. Thought that's it, jobs are good done. Let's go out, give it a good drive. Got about five miles down the road and all the brakes locked on, absolutely solid. The master cylinder, the, uh, the rod that comes off the pedal was too far into the master cylinder. So after about 40 brake pedal presses, it didn't release the pressure each time you press the brake until the point the pedal went absolutely rock hard and all the brakes locked on. So I had to sit there for a while, holding the pedal back, just waiting for the pressure release to get back. So we adjusted that rod, easy job, lengthened it back out the master cylinder, all the brakes come free, worked them a couple of times mint. I thought that's it. Let's go out for a drive. Let's enjoy this car at last. Totally broke down. Uh, luckily, we're in the Worcestershire countryside, so even though you want to smash the car with an hammer, when it does break down in a sort of picturesque location, you kind of look at it and think, yeah, I'll fix it, rather than just kicking the hell out of the wing or something like that. So distributor, we changed, you know, electronic ignition. That totally failed, lost all spark. Don't know why, just decided. I've probably driven it for like 10 miles so far and it's let go, it's brand new. Put the old distributor back in, points and condenser, sound, fired straight up. Uh, then we had misfires, plugs were knackered, leads then failed, changed those again. Uh, got it all running fine, thought mint. It was then into March and we had the NEC Classic Car Show. It ran and I loaded it up into our, uh, we got a twin tier seven and a half tonner. Loaded it into the top tier, fine, strapped it down, got there, jumped in it, click, engine wouldn't turn over. It's like, that's weird. Pushed it into the show, got it all set up. But while we were waiting, I popped the back cover off, got a spanner on it, wouldn't even turn over. Engine totally seized. I was like, oh, what could it be now? So got back, Keith and Simon dropped the engine out, and we found that the carb that I chucked away, one of the jets that actually fell out, into our reconditioned engine that, you know, I got out of that Beetle. And it must've been floating about happily in there while I'm driving, but when I put it up at that angle on the seven and a half tonner, it fell in and wedged in between the piston and the cylinder head. Luckily we weren't driving it, so it did absolutely no damage, but we fished it out, put the engine back in. I thought, that's it, we're done. It's mint, it's ready to go. Went out for a drive and it drove beautifully. I was like, yes. Got back, dropped about a litre and a half of oil all over the floor. I was like, what is going on with this? Recondition engine, what is going on? It's pouring out the back of uh, the front pulley. Looking into it, they don't actually have a seal behind that pulley. There's this little backwards thread that's cut into that pulley that when the engine's running, it throws the oil back into the engine and that's basically how it stops it peeing all out the floor. Well, this one wasn't doing its job, so I thought, oh, it's just the pulley, it's an aftermarket pulley, it's gonna be crap or something. Got the pulley off the old engine, put it in, went for a drive, same again. Absolutely hammering out. By this point, I was like, that's it. I've had enough, let's find somebody who can rebuild this engine, you know, properly, let's get an oil leak-free engine and one that actually runs properly. So scouring the internet, found the flat four workshop. Now, if you have an air-cooled Volkswagen or camper and it's got an engine problem, take it to this guy. He knows 
everything about it, basically it's all he does is rebuild these engines, servicing and repairs on these. He had a look at it, he phoned me, well, the next day, and inside the engine behind this pulley where they all get chucked back, there's a little tube in the casing that goes back to the sump. So the oil drains down this tube to the sump. In the wisdom of the people that rebuilt the engine that cost 2,800 pounds, I've still got the receipt, when they joined the two halves of the block together, they siliconed it and they filled all these tubes full of silicon on the front and the back of the engine. Brilliant, well done. So he took the engine apart, scraped out all the silicon, noticed that the oil pump was totally knackered in it, so he replaced that. Uh, and also the play, if you remember on the original video, the original engine had loads of end float. And this one had a little bit, but not a great deal, not as much as the old engine. So he measured in between the crank and thrust washer and the casing, and there was a four mil gap. So that's another thing he had to do. So he sent the casing off, had it line board, redid all the crank, put it back together, touch wood, it runs amazing. And we got no oil leaks. Starts on the key, I did 20 miles a weekend in it. Finally, I absolutely love this car. It's taken a year to love it. I wanted to smash it up, but it now drives mint. His bill, 1,600 quid. That's not bad. For taking the engine out, doing all the stuff that he did and giving me back an oil leak free Volkswagen engine, which is unheard of, that starts on the button. Perfect. I, I, you know, I'd have paid more than that, to be honest. And he rushed the job through because I kept pestering him, which was good because I wanted it to drive on the hot days. So there's only one thing left to do. Let's take this out for a little drive. Right, got me protective glasses on for the flies. <laughs> you probably won't be able to hear what I'm saying in a bit. That exhaust, so loud, but it looks cool. It's the hottest day of the year. It's the perfect day to be out in this, isn't it? Cheers. Oh. Had a fly hit me in the face already. Better not smile too much. Flies all over me teeth. It's got a 1300, it does pull quite well. I suppose the car weighs nothing, doesn't it? You won't be able to hear a thing what I'm saying at all, will you? Let's try and find a quieter road. noise. I don't think the doors are sealing that well or there's a little like wind noise through the front screen. What we sat at 50 mile an hour feels like you're doing a million miles an hour but it feels pretty safe to be fair. Right, I'll try. I'll try going down a slower road so you can actually hear what I'm saying. So what can I say about this car really? The engine, it's a 1.3 flat four. It actually goes all right. I suppose we're the same weight as a shopping trolley. So that does help a bit and the handling you know you like that far off the floor so it done off and all well wow. 
The only problem is I keep having to dip the clutch so you can actually hear me. Because <laughs> if I'm going full pout, it's just deafening. I don't know what it's like for the people that, you know, I'm going past. Ow, fly straight in my head. But uh, I don't really care. Puts a smile on your face, that's all that matters. Got some more twisty roads. So we've all been out in this car for a blast and it ranges from like Simon who's super calm and collective had a bit of a smile there but uh, not much to Keith who just has a laugh everything he does he's full of fun just tries to enjoy himself and then to me as always trying to find how fast I can go <laughs> test the top speed safely and within the speed limits of course but this thing is so fun to drive just everybody just goes nuts looking at it I don't think people care about the loudness. Just look at the colour of the thing. You can see it from like 10 miles away, it's that bright. Gotta be one of the most fun cars I've ever built. So like with the other cars, I'm thinking of raffling this off. It owes me about 15,000 quid now with the repairs. So it'll only be about a pound a ticket. So let me know if you're interested. For the hottest day of the year, it then half windy. Right, let's go back to the workshop and get a bit sweaty. Tell you what though, I've done about 20 miles over the weekend and about five miles today. It's used about a tenner of fuel. So that ain't bad, not bad at all. Right, let's wipe all these bugs off. <laughs> and that's it, we're back. And guess what? We didn't break down. It's took a year and it's finally mint. It's hot in here. What temperature is it? It's 42 degrees now in here. It's the joys of working in a cow shed. Um, let me know again with a raffle say it'd be just like a pound a ticket with this kind of thing it is it is proper cool to drive it's so much fun it feels like it shouldn't be legal to drive this on the road if if i'm honest because it's just so different than any other car out there and uh, oh speaking of that um you'll see a little video come out every year i enter the hot wheels legends tour um if you win you get a chance that they'll make you know your car as uh, a hot wheels which is on my big bucket list uh, that i would absolutely love so i entered the golf last time and i got into the top 10 which was good but they were too busy laughing at it to make it you know to take it serious uh this year i'm going to enter it's you're supposed to enter a unique a totally unique like one-off car so i'm going to enter the mini camper van i think it's cool as anything it's the only one in the world that is a proper you know metal backed camper conversion um, and i think it's proper unique so if you see a little video come out it's only got to be two minutes long um, there'll be no adverts and all that on it go on there put yes for the win and all that lot and leave it a like and hopefully they'll notice it and yeah it'd just be a cool thing to have a little hot wheels and me little mini camper van so that's it for me. Uh, we'll be in tomorrow morning early working on the Escort uh, with Keith and Simon. Hopefully it's not going to be too hot. Well, it's supposed to be like the same tomorrow. So we'll do a morning, then Wednesday, thunderstorms and rain. So can't wait for that. <laughs> so from me as always, 
see you on the next one. Ta-da.